guys, this looks like a fun one. It says evaluate sine of the quantity cosine inverse of square root of two over two plus tangent inverse square root of three over three. This is day 22 of our algebraic March calendar. If you want to try it on your own, pause it right now because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. This involves sine, cosine, and tangent. So here are the notes for sine, cosine, and tangent. In a right triangle with a given angle, the sine of that angle is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of that angle is the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. And I can show you some popular examples. We can use these notes for special right triangles. We have 30, 60, 90 triangles and 45, 45, 90 triangles. The sides of these two triangles will always be in these proportions to each other. So if we wanted to find sine, cosine, or tangent of 30, we would use these notes right here. For the sine of 30, it's going to be the opposite side, which is the n, over the hypotenuse, which is 2n. And that's the same thing as 1n over 2n, and that simplifies to 1 half. And then the cosine of 30 is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So the ratio would be square root of 3 over 2. And then the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it would end up being 1 over the square root of 3. This tangent has a radical in the denominator. If it's fully simplified, we won't have a radical in the denominator. So to fix that, we can multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. On top, the 1 times the square root of 3 is square root of 3. And on bottom, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, which is equal to 3. So now we have the fully simplified sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 degrees. And we can do the same thing for 45 degrees. The sine of 45 will be opposite over hypotenuse, which will be 1 over the square root of 2. And then the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which will also be 1 over the square root of 2. And the tangent will be opposite over adjacent. And since these match, it'll be equal to 1. And once again, these have some radicals in the denominator. We can fix that by multiplying by root 2 over root 2. On top, 1 times root 2 is root 2, and root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is equal to 2. So we end up with root 2 over 2. And the same thing will happen with this one. It'll become root 2 over 2. And this is a pretty good summary. I don't think we need the notes anymore. And all this stuff looks important. Let's put a box around it. Now we can evaluate this thing. First, let's focus on the cosine inverse of square root of 2 over 2. We can set this equal to x. Another way you can think of this is cosine of what gives us root 2 over 2. And if we look down here, it's cosine 45 degrees that gives us root 2 over 2. So x is equal to 45 degrees. And we can update this x up here. And then we can do the same thing for tangent inverse of root 3 over 3. We can set this equal to y. And we want to figure out what is y if tangent of y is equal to square root of 3 over 3. Well, let's check down here. The tangent of 30 degrees is root 3 over 3. So y is equal to 30 degrees. And we can update this y right here. So now we're trying to find sine of 45 plus 30 degrees. If we add these together, that's sine of 75 degrees. We could use a 75, 15, 90 triangle, but we usually don't keep notes on these. So we're going to use these notes instead. And we're looking for the one that's sine of two angles being added. That's this top one right here. So this sine of 45 plus 30 can be rewritten as sine of 45 cosine of 30 plus cosine of 45 sine of 30. So I just use these notes to rewrite this. The sine of 45, we have that down here, is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 30, we have as square root of 3 over 2. And then we're going to add to that the cosine of 45, which is root 2 over 2, times the sine of 30, which is 1 half. And now we can simplify this. Root 2 times root 3 is root 6, and 2 times 2 is 4. And then on this side, root 2 times 1 is root 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. Now we have two fractions with the same denominator, so we can write them as a single fraction with that denominator. This is the answer to our question. Let's put a box around it. This evaluated is square root of 6 plus square root of 2 over 4. How exciting. And here's tomorrow's problem. It says solve for x. It's log base 4 of log base 3 of x cubed equals 4.5. This looks like it'll be a fun one. How exciting.